Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today, uh, the United States celebrates Juneteenth, uh, which is a federal holiday that commemorates the end of slavery in the U.S. So I thought it might be interesting to take a look at some swords uh, that have been associated uh, with the struggle for emancipation uh, in the United States. Uh, stay tuned. It'll be pretty interesting. So to begin with, I want to show you uh, a sword that has recently been acquired by the Oakshot Institute. Uh, this is a U.S. Army 1850 model saber. Uh, these were in use uh, in the Civil War, and they were a staff officer's sword, which meant they were for use on foot. And this is really in my opinion, one of the few American Civil War swords that is actually a good sword fighting sword. So if you do HEMA and you fight with sabers, uh, this sword uh, is one that if you held it, I think would uh, show you how it's meant to be used. So this piece has a ray skin uh, grip, which is Pretty cool is quite common, especially in you know the modern period as a sword grip. Uh, sharks and rays, leather made from their skin, uh, it's kind of like sandpapery, even when it's wet. So it's nice and grippy. Uh, you can see that here it says US uh, on the hilt, which is modeled after a French uh, hilt. The blade on this one uh, is pretty cool because this sword was made by Tiffany & Co. Uh, in New York, right, the jewelers. So uh, before the Civil War, there's essentially Tiffany decided they should be patriotic and start making presentation and dress swords uh, along with jewelry uh, and earrings and all of that stuff. So Tiffany imported these blades from uh, uh, Germany, from Schoningen, and uh, I don't know if we can see it on here, but there is a mark that says PDL right down here, and that is the maker's mark for a maker uh, in Schoningen, uh, in Germany. So these swords had a really nice blade, and the balance on these uh, is just gorgeous. This is a sword fighter's sword from the period of the Civil War. So these would have been carried on both sides of the Civil War, so it's relevant uh, to Juneteenth for sure. But there's other swords that I don't have, which are really interesting and affiliated uh, with emancipation. Right? So one of them was a sword that belonged to George Washington that allegedly uh, was a gift from uh, Frederick the Great of Prussia to George Washington. And kind of the legend goes that it had inscribed on it or as part of a letter uh, uh, this kind of uh, saying <laughs> written by Frederick that said, from the world's oldest general to the world's greatest general. Uh, Frederick was allegedly a fan of George Washington for defeating the British. This may not actually be true. In fact, it probably isn't. Nevertheless, there was a sword that belonged to George Washington and George Washington's descendants believed it came from Frederick the Great. And John Brown actually stole this sword and brought it to Harper's Ferry as kind of a, a way to tie his rebellion against slavery into the revolutionary history of the United States. So he had that sword on him uh, in Harper's Ferry. And it wasn't the only uh, edged weapon uh, that was there. John Brown had also commissioned a thousand pikes uh, that he wanted to arm enslaved people with uh, to kind of create a slave rebellion uh, prior to the Civil War to wipe out uh, slavery in the South. So these swords are clearly associated with you know, the struggle for emancipation, uh, but they're not even the only ones. So if you look at the associated blog post on the Arms and Armor website to this video, I have pictures of uh, those pikes uh, and a portrait of Toussaint Louverture, who was the Haitian revolutionary leader of the largest slave uprising uh, since the attempt by Spartacus 2,000 years before, uh, when the Haitian uh, people overthrew 
uh, the French planters uh, who enslaved them in terrible conditions. Now, the sword that Toussaint Louverture is wielding in his famous uh, portrait is a cutto, uh, probably from you know the 1790s, 1780s. Uh, it was a popular kind of sword uh, in the period. More, we call it a cutlass, uh, probably today. But it was a symbol, in many ways, of the struggle for liberation. So. These are mostly later than most weapons we make at Arms and Armor, but they're certainly connected to the kinds of swords we make, right? So the pikes that John Brown had made were apparently replicas or based on the shape of a bowie knife that he had uh, taken from uh, a supporter of slavery in Missouri, that he liked you know, the outline and the shape of it, and he had a blacksmith forge that onto a crossbar on six foot poles. Now, Bowie knives are of course messers. Right? We do make messers. So Bowie knives are the descendants of messers. Cutlasses in many ways are the descendants of Dussocks uh, and the sabers of the Civil War are you know, clearly related to the back swords uh, and broad swords of an earlier period. So, if you want to learn more about this history, check out the blog post. Uh, otherwise, you think about this beautiful Tiffany sword. Uh, if you ever get your hands on one, hold it respectfully. Don't swing it around because it's old. But uh, think about how these swords were used in the struggle uh, uh, for freedom in the U.S. So happy Juneteenth. Take care, everybody.